Hello, my name's David Diley from Scarlet View Media, and one of my main roles within the company is to work as the colorist. Over the last eight to nine years, I've colored hundreds of projects for a wide variety of well-known clients, ranging from corporate explainer videos all the way through to feature films and everything in between. So I like to think that I've got a pretty decent knowledge of what I'm doing, and I like to think that my clients think I'm quite good at it. One of the reasons for that is because I'm a big believer in never allowing yourself to stagnate. There's always something more to learn. You can always get better. So in times where I don't have work on from clients or it's quite quiet, one of my favorite things to do to learn new skills and maybe refine the skills that I already have is to color match shots to well-known examples that you will know all about feature films commercials tv shows for example so what do i mean by color matching generally uh, a lot of the time i'll have clients who will give me references and they'll say i really really like the look of this can we build something along the lines of this and it could just be the tone it could be elements of that look or it could be we want to look exactly like that and generally what will happen with that is i'll have references from the client and i'll put them into resolve and i'll work side by side with the client's footage alongside the reference footage and I'm able to then look as the grade develops based on the reference and matching the things that they want me to match. So that can be really useful but one of the things that I really enjoy doing is blind colour matching. So by blind colour matching what do I mean? It's the same principle, it's taking a reference but it's only allowing myself a very very short period of time to look at it before the grade starts so maybe 30 seconds or so, and then I take that reference when I've looked at it, put it to one side, and don't look at it again until I do a side-by-side -side comparison of what I've come up with compared to what the reference is. Uh, it sounds like an odd thing to do, probably is an odd thing to do, but I enjoy it. So I thought it might be quite interesting to some of you to actually come along and watch me do it in real time as I do it. So that's what this video is. I've done a few of these before on YouTube. Uh, with varying levels of success, but you might find it quite interesting. So this is me colour matching content that I've been able to find online, which was an example camera shot from one of the Blackmagic cameras, trying to colour match this to a shot from the new trailer to Joker Folly Adieu. So I'm sure you've probably seen it, looks incredible. Let's see how close we can get. Please make it through to the end of the video and you can let me know in the comments down below what you think of the job that I did. Okay, so I'm in Resolve now. Uh, this is the clip that I've chosen to use. It's uh, example footage from one of the Blackmagic cameras. Uh, it's in Blackmagic RAW, it's in 6K. Uh, all I've done is basically just scale it into a 4K DCI timeline. I've added the, um, the, the crop lines here, the letterbox. In fact, what I think I'm gonna do is make that a little bit bigger. We'll do that. Um, and uh, so this is the clip that I'm gonna be using. And what I'm gonna be matching it to is the Joker Folly Adieu trailer, which dropped recently. And as is to be expected, looks absolutely amazing. And uh, I've already chosen the shot uh, which I'm going to be colour matching this to. Um, so we're just going to take a quick look through. This is the shot that we're going to be using, but let's have a quick look through at the uh, overall sort of look of where the trailer's coming from. So already the difference that I can notice between the first film and this is that there seems to be warmer tones in this film, particularly in the skin tone. It's still very cool, very blue, very teal, very green, but they have uh, adapted it to have um, uh, warmer skin tones and warmer highlights in there as well, which uh, gives it a really nice look, I think. Very, very moody. Great cinematography, again, that is just beautiful. Um, and let's have a quick scrub through some other bits. Obviously, we have these kind of scenes. I'm interested to see what this is all about. Um, when the film actually comes out. Again, lots of bright kind of orange highlights in there. So let's go through to the clip or the part of the trailer which we're gonna be matching, which is here, this incredible shot. Absolutely amazing. So we're gonna wait till he smiles. There we go, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to give myself roughly 30 seconds to take a look at it, establish the look, and then we're going to try and get as close to it as possible uh, in the grade. So what do we notice? We've got 
Warmer skin tones, as I said, but there's yellow in there as well, which was a big point of the first film. There's a lot of yellow when it comes to Joker, that kind of sickly green sort of look. We've got um, teal in there, elements of green. The levels of contrast are, it's moody looking. The mids are kind of pulled down a little bit. It's contrasty, but not overly crunchy like a Michael Bay type thing. Um, the highlights are very, very soft here. Uh, and in terms of saturation levels, it's nicely saturated. It's not overly saturated, but the colours are vivid. The colours are vivid. So I'm going to give myself about five more seconds, and then we are going to get rid of that and go into Resolve. So our clip looks a lot different. Now, we're not going to be able to match it exactly because the lighting's different. Production design is different, different camera, different lens. All of those variables means we're not going to be able to match it exactly. But what are we going to try and do? We're trying to match the tone. Could this sit alongside the clip we've just seen in that trailer and not stand out as being different? We're going to try and get as close as we can. In my node tree here, there's nodes that I know I'm not going to be using. So these two CST nodes here, it's a raw clip, so resolve establishes when you do a color managed workflow, which I've done here, I have done all my color management first. It knows this is a raw clip, it's Blackmagic Raw. I'm working in standard dynamic range on an extended working color space to deliver in Rec 709. So it's put it out of log and into this more pleasing, natural look with the colors and the contrast as a base to work from. So the first thing I'm gonna do which is not something I normally do. I do this very, very rarely, but it's to use a film emulation LUT as a base to work from. I'm trying to do this in as few nodes as possible, as quickly as possible. So we're gonna come into the effects and I'm gonna use Dehancer. Uh, when you apply Dehancer, it looks really terrible. So we're gonna get rid of everything on that. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the things that I know I'm not going to be using in here. Uh, I don't think I will put halation on it. Probably not going to bother with film grain because it was shot digitally. I don't know on which camera, but I assume it's shot digitally. Um, so we're going to stick within that kind of digital workspace, but still make it look very filmic. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply the film stock. Uh, I do have an idea of what I'm actually going to use. I just need to find it. It's one of the Fuji Chrome ones not that one it is that one okay so this one it's made quite a big change it's put that kind of greeny yellow in there but that's going to be the base that we work from now in terms of the temperature i want it cooler and i want that green in there so we're going to come into the raw panel and i'm going to bring that color temperature down quite a bit actually maybe not that far let's go to about there and with the tint I'm going to push the green in there as well Oof, not that much just to get it to taste I think around about there is okay so we're already getting, establishing that kind of green sort of look to it. So, exposure. In the exposure, I'm gonna, we've got the highlights here, which are clipping, which is here. Um, but we do want to have still a little bit of detail in there. Um, so I think we're gonna bring that down just a touch. Contrast. We are going to add some contrast, but we're not going to go crazy with it. I think that's a decent starting point. Uh, I am going to add a little bit of contrast pop to it. Contrast pop is a brilliant tool in Resolve, but don't overuse it because when you push it too hard, it looks really bad. So probably around about there. Saturation, I'm going to work in uh, an HSV color space. Uh, the reason for that is because HSV, uh, the way it handles the saturation, it 
just gives it it's more film like saturation so uh, when you increase saturation generally it it generally tends to increase the luminance of it so it makes things it makes the colors brighter and with film you don't want to do that you uh, with something cinematic you want the colors to be vivid and rich but so they're not popping out distracting from everything um, and i don't think i need to add too much uh saturation to it i think we'll probably stick around about there um in the shadows i want to bring the shadows here i want to cool those shadows down quite a bit so in the temp here i'm going to come into the log control panels and just bring those shadows down more so they're a bit more tealy and look nothing nothing too crazy but just so with the temperature it's not a wild change but it, it is quite a an important change put it like that for want of a better phrase uh, and then i want to go and work on a skin tone uh, for the skin tone i want to go quite tight so i don't want to pull in so much of everything else uh now the other thing here as well is between our uh, our footage that we're using and the example that we've used uh, of Joaquin Phoenix in there is that obviously uh, uh, th this lady here who looks very upset about waiting for a subway and I don't blame her for that she's obviously got a very different skin tone to Joaquin Phoenix so with that in mind that's going to alter things um, but like I said it's not about getting it dead on exact because we can't match that because there's certain variables that we won't be able to match exactly um, that's a decent selection I'm not overly concerned about picking up these bits in the posters and, and here on the platform I'm not overly concerned about that yet I might adjust that if it bothers me too much but we should be alright with that so that's going to be our skin selection and we're going to push some warmth back into there not in a log we're not in the primaries we're going to push some warmth back into the skin tone just so it looks a little bit more like skin but because there's bleed from the 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 lighting on on joker uh i don't want to go too hard and make his skin look too natural but that actually looks quite nice so I'm going to come into the uh, controls in Dehancer and we're going to add some film compression just to soften things down a little bit. And we can see it making a difference in those highlights. But I still want a little bit of punch in there. So maybe around there. Now with the print, I'm going to try the 23. No, that is not going to work. So we're going to keep it linear. So uh, in the tonal contrast here, I've, and, uh, I've put the range limiter in as well. So what that does, as you can see, is it takes some of that contrast out, but I want to put that contrast back in using the print tool. We don't want to go too far, but we do let me just come out of here a little bit, zoom out a bit. Like I said, I'm using my uh, display, my main mastering display here. So we've got that contrast in here. Probably back that down a little bit. And then use the color density, just a little bit of that. Now in the exposure, that contrast, obviously it's pushed our shadows down. So we do want to lift those shadows up a little bit. So we'll do that in the log controls. We don't want to crush the blacks. Now we've pulled red out, uh, quite a bit of red uh, warmth out of the shot. So here, seeing that this, we're losing, we kind of crushed the red element of the shadows. I've not got a problem with that. The overall shadows here, they're just, just kissing zero. Might lift it up a touch ever so slightly. So back into the Dehancer controls. We'll 
we're going to enable that and maybe push a little bit towards actually maybe push a little bit towards blue because we've got yellow in here we've got that yellow is naturally in here and then some of the cyan in there too not a huge amount uh, the shadow tones we want to cool those shadow tones down the mid tones we want to warm them up a little bit not too much though and the highlights we want to warm them up Now, because we've put cyan in there, we've lost a little bit of contrast. So we're going to push the contrast a little bit. Do we want to add a halation in there? Yeah, I think I do. Now, look at this. Part. I think we're a little bit too saturated here. So I'm going to pull some saturation out. I think in her skin tone, we've got a little bit too much saturation. And temperature, we're going to cool down a little bit. Not a huge amount. And I think... I think maybe we want to put a little bit more green in there. Uh, in terms of the color boost, maybe. So color boost is, generally it's colors that are less saturated. It pushes the saturation into there a little bit. Oops. In terms of the tint. Oh, enabling it will be a good idea. Uh, more in the green so I'm looking at that and thinking that's pretty close although it's really difficult normally uh, when I'm working with a client and a client says to me that they want to have uh, a reference and, and a look that's similar to another film I'll have the reference here that I can work from and I can constantly refer back to and just get elements out of it like contrast and saturation and, and hue and tint etc just to use it as a well as a reference just to see how useful that is but this as a tool is kind of quite useful um, just how much detail can I take from looking at something for a short time and then trying to match the tone of it as close as I can uh, I'm just looking at details here. Uh, so if we look here, we've got nice cool shadows. I'm not going to bother with denoising or, or sharpening or anything like that. Like I said, I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. Um, now, I'm at that stage here where I'm looking at this thinking that is pretty close, I think. I think from memory. But I'm also looking to, is there anything else that I need to do with this? Uh, I think skin tone, I probably want to cool the skin tone down a little bit. Again, her skin tone is different. So, uh, so I don't want to take her natural skin tone out too much. Uh, but I also want to try and match it in terms of the levels of saturation. So, all right, so that skin tone, she still has, let me come off that, she still has nice natural warmth to her but she looks like she's part of the scene she looks like she's lit in the scene if we gave a completely natural skin tone she'd pop out and and it would just look a bit weird it would look odd um do we have clipped highlights yes we've got clipped highlights but we're still getting detail around that i'm okay with that let's look at maybe adding if we add a little glow into there I don't want to soften it up too much because it's the kind of the content matter, the subject matter of the film. It's not a soft, nice, warm film. I probably, I imagine. Um, that's with the glow on. That's with the glow off. So I, I'm going to keep that in, but I'm going to dial it down a little bit. Maybe 
we spread it out a little bit in there. I don't want to go crazy with it. I think that looks pretty close. Let's go full screen. I think that looks quite good. So I'm going to hold it. I'm going to leave it at that because, like I said, I wanted to do this as quickly as possible. Um, are there any elements in here, any errors, anything that is standing out that looks weird or wrong or needs addressing? Obviously, if I was doing this for a client, I'd spend a lot more time on it. Um, but I'm trying to do this quite quickly. Uh, those shadows here, I think they're a little bit blue. I'm going to try and push the shadows maybe a little bit more towards green. But not a crazy amount, maybe like that. I'm not going to desaturate the shadows either. Uh, no, I'm not. Right, okay, let's look at that full screen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the sound off and we'll look at it full screen. Okay. Okay, so I think that looks pretty decent. Elements to uh, to consider as well that make the look the look. Things that you might not normally do. So the white on a jacket, the white on a top, it's got yellow in there. It's bled in. Like so a lot of the time you're gonna look and keep white white. If it's a commercial, if it's a corporate job, things like that, you, you can't really push too far with those things. Clean is the is the word to use. Here, it doesn't matter because it's it's a movie, it's a, a feature film, so we can have a lot more uh, room to play with. So there we go. What I'm going to do now is then go into a side by side. So I've just popped over to Premiere now just to put them side by side so we can take a look and uh let's do that let's see how close we are so here's joker and here's ours so let's put that on full screen and that is not bad i don't think yes there's differences the lighting is different obviously the lady here is in kind of quite direct light from from here uh joker uh or joaquin phoenix here he's got a lot softer light on him but if we look kind of this here, and this is, uh, I think this is a mixture of smoke and horrible YouTube compression. Um, but if you look here in these kind of tones around here and, and, and here uh, uh, above the kind of the, the roof or the ceiling for want of a better phrase of the, um, uh, the subway, we're not that far off. Compare the floor here down to here. That's really, really close. Uh, contrast levels, I think, we're probably a little bit more contrasty. We've got this over here. We're a little bit deeper in our blacks, I think. Um, the hair is pretty similar. Uh, skin tones, obviously, super difficult. to. We, we can't match the two skin tones because they're two naturally different skin tones. But I think the level of saturation in the skin tones is about right. Um, if we look at the lipstick on here, making up his smile and compare it to here on the poster, pretty close. Um, right, so there we go. There's an example of trying to colour match something with barely giving yourself any reference time at all and just through knowing the software and knowing how to build a look. Uh, I don't think that's bad, but... I want to hear your comments, so let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, if you can see any areas that can be improved upon, of course, there's going to be areas that be improved upon. Uh, but I don't think that's uh, that's too bad. So yeah, really interested to let to know what you think. 
Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Bit of a longer video than probably you used to watching. I hope you stuck with me through the end. I enjoy doing this stuff. If you want more, let me know and I'll do more. But thanks very much. Really enjoy doing it. And I will hopefully be hearing from you in the comments. Thanks a lot.